epilepsy profile in infants with a congenital Zika virus infection. First, we have a definition about what is a Zika virus infection and this is it. The spread of Zika virus has been concerning and scary for some. Zika virus. A congenital Zika virus infection may have severe 
clinical consequences including dysmorphic features, orthopedic ab abnormalities and ophthalmologic uh, and auditory lesions with microcephaly and hydrocephalus. Applications in medicine. Applications in medicine, we have patients who refer had congenital or acquired microcephaly and uh, were asymptomatic and symptomatic newborns who were born to mothers who had confirmed or suspect Zika virus infection during pregnancy, had qualifications not related to other and uh, in uterus infection, had detected were by means in uh, neuroimaging studies or had an unexplained development of the leg and lip in geographic regions where Zika virus infection was epidemic. Then we have another video. Zika virus can be transmitted through mosquito bites or sexual contact. Zika virus can infected be transmitted through mosquito bites or sexual contact. Affecting their growth and infected babies ability may suffer from microcephaly, affecting their growth the and intellectual can also ability, cause neurological and require lifelong such care. As paralysis the virus or can also cause neurological complications, may occur such as paralysis or respiratory difficulties. Everyone should Death take precautions may occur in to protect severe themselves cases. from getting Zika virus. Everyone should take precautions to protect themselves from getting Zika virus. Pros and cons. Uh, in pros and cons, we have another video uh, that showing the pros and cons of uh, the epilepsy in uh, Zika virus. So in general, we see these the most viral infections. Now that may be the case in the first trimester. Is going to be the most severe. Waiting for data to tell now that us may be the case in but there has been data still that's waiting for data to tell us. But there has been data that's come out that has shown that even after the majority of organic cells which is a time period after the majority of organic cells have occurred, so the so it's organ very concerned what this virus can have a significant impact. So it's very concerned what this virus can do during pregnancy and really understanding it is going to be absolutely essential. We need to be able to tell a woman and tell a family what is we the need risk to be able of having to tell virus a woman and tell a family on pregnancy. What is and the we risk need to be able to tell them that given virus. the constellation of and pregnancy itself. So if she's in her first trimester, the if she's under 14, the constellation of pregnancy itself. How is that different so if she's in her first trimester, if she's under 13 weeks? Does it how matter if she's had she's some other co-infection? Does it matter, Does it if, she matter if she's had some other co-infection? Does it matter the if she was symptomatic she was with the virus, meaning Does she had the rash the or the fever, or if she was asymptomatic? Does, Does, Does that change the impact of the pregnancy? Does it matter how the virus was obtained? And then what are the role of these other environmental factors? And then what are the role of these other environmental factors? So is the environment that she's living going to make the infection with Zika Worse for her pregnancies. What we know now are really just for those women who what we have know had now are really just for those women who and have for the most had part a have had a child who's had microcephaly or small. For the most part, have um, had a child who's had microcephaly or small. It's going to require a lot of understanding of what are the implications of that. It's going to require a lot of understanding of what are the implications of that. Because microcephaly itself can have quite a spectrum of that. And the exactly outcome of microcephaly and the Zika virus is not yet clear. We don't what know is exactly what that's going to look like. So we're going to need to study and, what and understand what is the impact of microcephaly from Zika virus. But it goes and what are the interventions that might optimize those outcomes. Born, but it goes actually even beyond that. Because there are going to be children in the world who don't and have so microcephaly, but still have complications likely from Zika virus. And so it's important as we do these studies to follow not and only the to children who really have microcephaly, but to follow all of what is impacted from and to, Zika virus. To and to really systematically understand what is impacted from Zika virus, and then what interventions can we do to try to optimize their life. Then we have the pros. The prevalence of epilepsy is uh, the cohort was 
present and the mean age of infant was as of nine of four point nine months. The graphon parents of the infant infants can seizure occur during the first six months of life in seventy percent and the infants uh, or at the onset of the epilepsy had jury follow up the mean seizure types of where a spastic uh, epileptics in 72% of infants focal motor seizures uh, with 21% and tonic seizures with 4% uh, a single seizure type was documented in 77 and 77% uh, on infants. Then we have uh, the cons that means the prevalence of the um, of the seizure types during a uh, during during the Zika virus infection. Here we have a uh, all the types of seizures and his prevalence. Then we have the issue applied in Ecuador. The Arab deal missed again was relatively low-key. The Arab deal missed again was relatively low-key. Began to be seen places outside Africa. Uh, uh, UC San Diego is a... Uh, began to be seen places outside Africa. UC San Diego is a hotbed of science that really can be applied uh, to this disease in a very productive way. So what he did was um, first set up experimental models so what we did was um, first set up experimental models. We used animal models as well as uh, brain organoids in a deep. So we really proved causation that the Zika virus can not only cross through the placenta, but in fact the fetus can attack the neuroprovincial cells causing microcephalus and other types of birth defects. It's interesting to note that in the infected animals that were born, microcephalus is one of the symptoms of the C. We have to see a stronger impact of the Zika virus in different tissues where the entire body, all the tissues in the animal have some kind of Problem. That, that put us in a, in a nice position to use that as a platform to test the opportunities, for instance, the effects of vaccines or uh, perhaps other drugs. It has become clear that Zika virus causes microcephalus. What is next is now to figure out how does it do it. So my lab is using stem cell based. Uh, uh, the models of the brain what we learn is that the Zika and 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 Zika and
people were seeking out here the word with the power or Android device. And they were donating to uh, their computing power so we can model the spiral proteins and test the millions of compounds to see which ones are able to inhibit uh, or to affect the environment. So we have a number of instruments um, equipped with automation so we are able to screen millions of compounds in our Rio experiment. Uh, and that will right away tell us which of the candidate compounds are used for the compounds so basically and we're sharing this compounds for the entire scientific community and, and that will accelerate the process until we need. get these compounds to real drugs uh, and reach the people we need. Conclusion. The prevalence of epilepsy is referral syndrome based court has higher was higher than the prevalence series which prevalence the re, the in range of nine to fifteen percent. Patients have early once and often drug epilepsy. The Center for Disease Control looked at the machine that was previously had a large number of pregnant women found a large number with pregnant women during pregnancy. And in the United States, pretty much all pregnant women are being screened and you have to have you traveled or has your sexual partner traveled during the time of pregnancy. And so we have a, a decent sense of uh, who has had this exposure. This new epidemiologic data from the CDC really helps quantify the risk, the, what the risk is. And then if a pregnant woman is infected with Zika virus, there's about a 10% chance that the child will have some sort of uh, birth defect, most commonly microcephaly. 10% is a very high number, uh, and it really stresses the importance uh, and that pregnant women not really travel to the Zika virus endemic areas, pregnant women not and that if people are traveling to areas where Zika virus is endemic, and that, if people that they wait uh, at least uh, eight weeks if it's a woman, or six months if it's a man before trying to conceive a child. Six months. Uh, the, the, this 10% uh, value seems to be very real, um, and it, it really puts a number to what was previously a obscure concept of risk. I think the take-home point from this is that pregnant women should defer travel, if at all possible, to Zika virus endemic areas until they're no longer pregnant. Uh, and if a couple is uh, thinking about having a child, and is traveling to a Zika virus endemic area that they wait at least eight weeks if it's a woman who has traveled, or six months if it's a man who has traveled, before trying to conceive a child. I think this is an important piece of information in terms of the epidemiology of Zika virus infection and what the implications are. Previously, we knew that there was a risk of microcephaly or other birth associated risk. Uh, with uh, infection during pregnancy associated with, with the uh, unborn child. But we didn't really have a number with that. We didn't know of the people who travel, how many have a number you're going to get infected with Zika, of the pregnant women who are infected with Zika, how many of those unborn children are going to have some sort of birth defect. And now we have a better sense of what that actual number is, and that of the pregnant women who have laboratory evidence of Zika virus infection, about 10% of those children will have some sort of birth defect children will have some sort of birth defect associated with them. Here was the epilepsy profile in infants with congenital Zika virus and Zika virus infection. Thank you.
pero es que ese ceviche es buenazo, 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 buenazo. Y ahorita estoy como que básicamente esperando que se haga, que se termine y termino, así, todo de al fin, como que ya sé qué hacer, como que ya, ya como que se utiliza esta pendeja de campaña. 